Today's episode takes us into the complexities of the law with a case that challenges the meaning of lawful detention and the consequences of a faulty court order. This is the story of James Leshore, whose conviction for escape was overturned because the police lacked the legal authority to detain him in the first place. Let's dive into the details of this fascinating case. On March 17, 1999, Officer Michael Bennington of the Allen County Sheriff's Department arrived at James Leshore's last known address in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He was there to execute a writ of attachment, a court order to detain Leshore for contempt of court related to unpaid child support. When officers entered Leshore's home, they placed him in handcuffs based on the writ. But moments later, Leshore slipped his hands out of the cuffs and bolted from the house. A frantic chase ensued, with officers repeatedly ordering Leshore to stop. Ten minutes later, the police apprehended him. Leshore was charged with escape, found guilty in a bench trial, and sentenced to four years in prison, which was suspended in favor of two years of probation. He appealed his conviction, arguing that his detention was unlawful because the writ of attachment was invalid. So, was Leshore's escape a crime, or was he fleeing from an unlawful detention? Let's explore the facts. To understand Leshore's appeal, we first need to look at the writ of attachment that landed him in handcuffs. Under Indiana law, a writ of attachment must include either a bail or escrow amount. This ensures that the person detained has a specified amount to pay for release, depending on the nature of their contempt, whether it's related to child support or another issue. In Lashore's case, however, the writ issued by the court failed to include this critical information. The writ left both the bail and escrow sections blank, and instead, a handwritten note said, no bond. According to the statute, this omission rendered the writ invalid, making the detention unlawful. Since lawful detention is a key element of the crime of escape, Leshore argued that he couldn't be guilty of escape if his detention wasn't lawful to begin with. The trial court originally found Leshore guilty of escape, relying on the fact that he fled while in handcuffs and disobeyed multiple commands to stop. However, Leshore's appeal focused on the technicalities of the writ, arguing that the state failed to meet the legal requirements necessary for lawful detention. On appeal, the court agreed with Leshore. Indiana law defines lawful detention as an arrest or any other detention for law enforcement purposes. The court concluded that since the writ did not meet statutory requirements, it was invalid on its face. Without a valid writ, Leshore's detention was never lawful, and thus his actions did not meet the legal definition of escape. The court's decision was clear. Leshore's conviction was reversed. The reasoning was straightforward. Reasonable people could not conclude that Leshore had fled from a lawful detention because there was no lawful detention in the first place. However, not everyone agreed with this outcome. Judge Barnes, who dissented from the majority opinion, argued Leshore should have been considered lawfully detained regardless of the technical defect in the writ. Citing precedent, Barnes em emphasized that individuals should comply with law enforcement commands even if they believe the arrest is unlawful. He pointed out that public policy discourages resisting arrest to prevent physical altercations between citizens and police in public spaces. Judge Barnes also highlighted that Officer Bennington, acting in good faith, believed the writ was valid and was simply doing his job. Barnes's view was that the legality of the detention should have been challenged in court, not by fleeing and creating a dangerous situation. So, what does this case tell us about the justice system? Importance of strict adherence to legal procedures and the need for checks and balances in law enforcement. A single error on a writ led to a cascade of legal consequences, ultimately resulting in the reversal of Leshore's conviction. The debate between ensuring public order and protecting individual rights is a delicate balance, as seen in the differing opinions of the judges in this case. Leshore's case also raises broader questions. Should technical errors invalidate law enforcement actions entirely? And where should we draw the line between lawful commands and protecting citizens from unlawful detentions? <laughs>